you feel that uh, there's been a loss of the autonomous identity, um, an erasure of, of, of lesbians. And, and I'd like you to explain what you mean by that and why that that is a, a significant worry that's led to the setting up of this specific project. Well, we're not separatist. We love our gay brothers and we'll stand in solidarity with them as and when we're targeted together through homophobia, bigotry, etc. But in the main, what's happened, I've been out for more than 40 years now as a lesbian, and what's happened increasingly in the last two decades is that resources um, have been focused on gay men, um, on the male um, individuals, groups within this ever-expanding rainbow acronym, which my friend Simon Fanshawe said now is getting to be more like an unbreakable Wi-Fi code than anything that means that's meaningful. Most people don't know what the QQIA plus means. And lesbians, although we're the first L within this um, alphabet soup, get very little attention. So how that's actually panned out is that we are last when it comes to funding. If there is any research on our lives, we tend to be put together with gay men, so it's lesbian and gay, which is a real problem because, of course, we're women. And that means that we suffer sexism, we have different needs, we have different priorities than do gay men. We also have different cultural needs, and we, we don't, for example, fit necessarily in clubs or in social groups with gay men all the time. Sometimes we want to be amongst just women who are lesbians. So we have been left out in the cold. We want to get our identity and our autonomy back. And in the main, we want research policy um, and even issues such as health and well-being to be focused, focused specifically on us as a group. You say at the beginning it's not separatist. Um, Kathleen writes that this is an entirely positive mission, but it will cause controversy. There will be people who think that this does mean you want to distinguish yourselves and not stand together, as you said at the start, with brothers and sisters, which is exactly what this rainbow is intended for. What would you say to them? I think that the Rainbow Coalition came without many lesbians um, wanting or needing that I think that what we needed was more focus on us as women for example in the 1980s through to the 1990s and it still happens occasionally today lesbians were losing our children through the family courts when vexatious men often abusive former partners um, where when women were in heterosexual relationships took them through the family court to punish them for leaving them. We are subject to sexual violence and punishment rape. We're coerced into marriage and heterosexual relationships because we're women and many of us are in marginalised communities, whether it's working class communities, religious or minority ethnic communities. And it's much harder to be out as a lesbian um, than it is even to be out as a gay man in general. Now, the reason why it's a positive project, but also at the same time, the reason why there'll be many that across that we've said that we want to be autonomous is because we have expected to follow the lead of gay men. Gay men have more power, have more control of their lives, have more financial backup often, and they're represented within popular culture in a much more positive way than are lesbians. So what we're saying is, we are very happy to be amongst our gay brothers when we have a fight on our hands that affects both groups. But that's only ever happened once in my lifetime as an out lesbian, and that was Section 28 in the mid-1980s. There's never been another piece of legislation that has affected both groups. And we're always coming last. We're always behind gay men and their needs. And it's not their fault. We're not blaming gay men for being first in the queue when it comes to resources or attention. But it's time that we had that too.